Um, bon dia. Um, I'm Megan Hoyer. I'm the data editor at the Associated Press. And uh, here to talk about um, turning your data projects, your internal work, into product. Product that other people are going to use in their newsrooms, um, that other people are, might use um, outside of news, and kind of what that takes. Uh, this is our team. I work on a team of uh, 11 folks. Um, we're split between data analysts, which is what I do, and news developers who kind of build tools, uh, do a lot of visualizations, um, and work much more on the, the kind of heavy coding backend side. Uh, my side of the team does analysis, mostly in R, for the news report. So we work with reporters from around the world um, to help tell stories. So that's a little bit about kind of how our team works. The nice thing about having a team um, that's structured the way ours is, is um, we often work separately. So the news developers have kind of their set of priorities. Um, and obviously the analysts have our set of priorities, which is mostly around uh, tradi more traditional reporting roles. Um, but then we can come together, and that's kind of where you see a lot of the power of our team because we have this amazing back-end development work going on, but then we also have um, these people who can bring it to the newsroom and who are in direct contact with reporters all day long and who might know some of the problems that reporters are facing and some of the things um, that we can solve together. So I wanted to introduce you to three um, projects that the AP has done um, that have turned into product. Um, one of the things that we've been doing for a long time, and one, actually this was one of the reasons I was hired at the AP, is to handle the data distributions program. Um, data distributions for the AP, what we were doing was, oftentimes we were doing this very um, complex, heavy data analysis, um, looking for a big scale national story or investigation. And we would, you know, work for months standardizing data, um, doing the analysis, collecting data, standardizing it, doing the analysis. We would write one, maybe two national stories, and then kind of <laughs> throw that work away and go on to the next story. Um, and we looked around and we thought about the function of the AP, which is a news collaborative, right? We have members um, from around the US and from around the world. And we were like, we're leaving a lot of these stories uncovered. This data that we are using oftentimes to tell a national story can also be told to tell really great local stories if we can get it into the hands of the right people. And so what we ended up doing was taking our data, taking our analysis, and then sharing it with AP members from around the country. And so we do all of the work of the high-level analysis. Here's our national results. Here are our findings. Um, you know, here's it. It's clean. It's got a data dictionary. It's docu well documented. Go, go forth and find your local story in our data set. And so basically what we do is um, we release data to members um, about every two weeks. Uh, we release a different data set. We give our members um, two or three weeks to work with the data before we publish our national story. So everyone gets the data under embargo. Um, they, so they, we, we host a webinar oftentimes to walk people through how to use the data. So we kind of train people on um, looking at data and using it in their newsroom to tell local stories. And um, then we all publish kind of on the same day, which we have found dramatically increases our stories impact because not only are people using the AP, the national AP story, but they're also telling these great local stories that the AP never would have gotten to. Um, so it's been really, really impactful. Um, and the trick is to find a data set that can, that can be granular enough to get to a local story. So sometimes we use, for instance, um, data that's down to the census tract level, which is basically neighborhood by neighborhood across the country. Other times it's at you know, a county or a state or a city level. Um, and again, we try to you know, do about 20 of these a year. Um, we vary our topics, so we try to, um, you know, if we do a, a health data set, health-related data set one week, we might do three weeks later an education-related data set. 
um, just to kind of keep things interesting for our members. Um, but this kind of all derived out of our natural workflow and our natural processes because we were already telling these stories within AP. And then the trick was just to turn around and share that and guide people um, to using it in their local newsrooms. And what we've found is like our local members love it because we're giving them a way into data journalism that without so much of the lift. A lot of the um, local newsrooms we, we help are you know, metro newspapers, local TV stations, uh, national public radio stations, things like that. Um, and they might not have the staff to be able to do some of the data work. Um, and even if they do have staff, the, the, that staff wants to use their time looking into city government or state government issues. And we can handle a lot of like kind of the big level national stories for them and free their time up so that they can spend their real intense data time telling local stories that no one else can tell. So for instance, if we get a data set on uh, test water testing and water quality testing from across the country, we'll, you know, that's been a big story in the US for the last couple of years. We'll do the analysis, share it with our members. They can all write stories about how their local water companies fared in, um, in testing. Um, and then they can, do a, they can spend their time doing another story that we would never be able to, to do because it's about city government. And you know, the AP is not going to get into that level of, um, of local coverage. And I'm going to walk you through a, a data set. This is one um, we did recently. I'll walk you through this in a minute on, um, on dams. So it's on infrastructure. And it was kind of the status of every dam in the country. So this is a different type of product, but it's another thing we've done in the last year. Um, AP, the way our team works, the way um, my side of the team works, is all of our analyses look the same. And part of it is because we use this open source software that we've developed to create a project structure and then to link our, um, our projects with GitLab and with a data storage system. So that way, Basically, I mean, when you do data journalism, and I've lived in this world for a while, you can make a very quick mess of a data project. Your data files might live somewhere. Your analysis is kind of not well documented. It can live somewhere else. If you try to share with a colleague, they have no idea how you built your project or where all of your things are. Um, at the AP, every project looks exactly the same. So we all push our code to GitLab. Um, every project has the same file structure. The data always lives in the same place. Uh, analysis files always live in the same place. Our outputs always live in the same place. And that way, if I'm you know, checking on a, a colleague's work or if someone calls in sick, I can easily jump into their project and it looks the exact same as my project. And it's up to date, it's always synced. So um, it allows us to share and collaborate with each other really well. It also um, allows us to organize things just personally really well. So we looked at that and we've been using this for about two years. And we said, you know, every time we talked to other journalists, they were like, how do you do this? This is, you know, like, we don't have anything like this. So we decided to make it a product. We decided that this was something that other newsrooms could use. Um, so it's called Data Kit. It's totally open source. It includes hook, kind of hooks to GitLab and GitHub to sync your code. Uh, it includes um, hooks to Amazon S3 buckets and to Google Drive to sync your data files. Um, we have a couple other plugins. It actually plugs in directly to our data distributions program so we can push files directly to that. Um, and basically it just allows us to keep organized and to work faster. So this is um, something we've probably spent about six months this year just doing the documentation and building some of the plugins that we thought other newsrooms would need um, to push this out into the world and to make it a viable product. Um, and you know, I'll talk about this a little later. One of the things about turning your own personal projects like this uh, into product is you really have to think about that user experience, which is very different. Like how other people might use your product is very different from how you would use your product. And the fact that um, other people aren't as familiar with your product means you have to do a lot more explaining um, than you would ever have to do internally. Uh, third project, 
this was something uh, the AP came up with because we were doing a, um, a FOIA-related uh, project a couple of years ago called Sunshine Year, where we were tracking open government legislation. And we had a bunch of reporters and a bunch of different news organizations tracking this legislation with us. And we were like tracking things in like a Google Sheet. Um, it was super <laughs> low, low key, and it didn't really help people um, get the information they needed. Um, it was all like very manual process. So we built something called SunHub, which is just basically a state legislative tracking service. Um, it allowed people to put in the bill number, it would pull the bills, it would categorize the bills, um, they could follow all the bills in their state, they could follow all the bills in their region, they could follow all the bills across the country on a certain topic, um, that kind of thing. So this was um, something that we pushed out to AP members. We also had a bunch of open government advocates from around the country who were in this, um, this tool also kind of, you know, flagging uh, legislation for us and uh, tracking it through SunHub. So those are three projects um, that we've worked on to, uh, that are products as well. Um, and all of them stemmed really from uh, kind of scratching our own itch. Like <laughs> these are all things that we were doing internally um, that we then decided, oh, there's a larger like purpose for this, and there's a, a larger use case for this that other newsrooms could benefit from. Um, so why turn projects into product? Um, here's some of the pros, and I really wanted to just kind of throw this out there so we could have a conversation about these kinds of things later. Um, at the AP, because we're a nonprofit news collective, we have a huge emphasis on helping our members and working with our members and collaboration. So um, for us, one of the biggest pros of doing any kind of product work is to share our knowledge and some of our technical expertise with our membership. Um, we see it as benefiting the entire news ecosystem if we can deliver some of these products and get them out into the world. Um, particularly, and I'm, this is one of my like pet goals, is helping local news. I come from a local news background. I was a local news reporter for many years at Metro papers across the country. Um, and I have a serious interest in helping local newsrooms tell better stories and to use data. So um, that to me, like the data distributions program, I see as a real service to helping local news um, do more. Um, for us, it expands the reach of our own stories. We found um, one of the easiest ways to sell reporters and editors on data distributions in the, inside the AP um, was showing them the kind of play their stories got when we did a data distribution. Um, because the local papers would be more aware of the stories moving on the wire, they would localize things and play them up in their news reports, um, and suddenly the, the, the AP stories were getting more attention, which editors and reporters within the AP um, took as a great thing. So even though there's more work around a data distribution because they had to be involved in webinars and writing documentation and things like that, there was a payoff. Their story got better play and like what editor and reporter doesn't like better play for their stories. So it allowed us to sell it internally. Um, and finally, like we see it really as a, as a membership retention um, program and a, and a membership attraction. Like having these kinds of products puts our name out there in a different way. And what we've seen with our data distributions program is that um, traditional AP members have really embraced it. But we also have newsrooms that are not at all AP members who don't take the, the wire service, for instance, but who do take our data distributions because they see real value in the data. So they've, we've brought in this whole other group of customers and potential um, you know, market for the AP uh, that the AP didn't really have access to anymore, so, or before. So, um, so that's been very popular. But there are cons to, uh, to productizing your projects. And I, I would really encourage folks to think about these types of things before you decide to push your project out into the world in a public-facing way. Um, products are super time intensive. Like it's hard to overstate how much time you're gonna spend translating your personal work into work that other people can make sense of and use in a product-oriented way. 
Um, I would say I probably spend 10 to 20% of my daily work life um, dealing with customers, talking to AP members, um, making sales calls, and none of that, I mean, I'm a, I'm a reporter, um, but none of that is like the traditional journalism role. And we do have a project manager who's a, a product person who works on um, data distributions with us, so I don't even handle much of that work. But there's still that, um, that need to promote your work and to manage your projects and products um, that's pretty time intensive. Um, having a um, project turn into product immediately changes your audience. <laughs> so you can also get into like this scope creep where suddenly you are handling members and users and they have all sorts of requests that your team don't, like, you know, features that your team doesn't need, for instance. Um, so you could lead to scope creep if you, if you create a product. Um, you know, you all of a sudden could be answering to a bunch of people in the public or in other news organizations um, that have totally different priorities than your priorities. So staying on track with, you know, it, taking, taking requests, kind of, um, but also, you know, doing your work is, um, is kind of challenging. Um, you know, one of the biggest things with turning your projects into product, and this is like always something that, you know, show your work, um, you know, always leads to, people can, you know, find out what you did wrong, which is, can be embarrassing and just simply is, is tough to take. And you have to be ready um, to accept that. Like your work is all out in public now. Um, you know, things, things can be found. So you have to be really open about that idea. And finally, um, when you're turning your projects into product, and you know, this is always a challenge, um, there is, especially with money-making products, um, always the tightrope to walk of like what our values and uh, focus is as journalists versus sales and marketing and who your customers could be. So the need to uphold editorial standards becomes really significant. When people say, oh, you know, you're doing data distributions. Well, you're doing, you have a legislative tracker. You know who would love that? A bunch of lobbyists would love your legislative tracker. Okay, but what does that mean for us as a news organization if we're selling this service to lobbyists or to industry? Um, we haven't, by the way. But, you know, you have to make those kinds of decisions and you have to hold, uphold certain editorial standards and that becomes, um, you know, just something that has to be in the forefront when you're, when you're thinking about these things. So that's kind of um, some of the, the challenges and um, the thinking behind how we've done these things. Um, that is my information. Uh, I wanted to show off quickly um, our data distributions. Yeah, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so this is, uh, this is data kit and basically, um, what data kit looks like. It's super easy, it's a command line tool. One of the things it does is create this folder structure for every single project. So that's what I mean when I say all of our projects look the same. Um, and then it also, again, syncs all of your code to GitHub. It syncs all of your data and pushes your files to Amazon S3. So all we have to do is a couple of simple command line commands and your data is synced your code is synced, and all of your projects look pretty much the same. Um, the great thing about open sourcing this project has been uh, since, so we open sourced it in uh, September the, for the second time. We open sourced it earlier, um, and that was a, a product fail. So we did it again this year with better documentation and more plugins. And um, it, it runs off of a plugin structure, and we've actually had three or four members now write their own plugins for DataKit, and we've gotten a good amount of use across, um, across different newsrooms and for different purposes, which is really great to see. Um, that's always what you want to see is your product become successful and, and be put to use. Um, and then this is our data distribution program. Like I said, we release data sets for local news reporting uh, about every two weeks. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, 
So this is the project I was saying that we did on dams. And this is what our members see. So we will send them an email saying, hey, we have a new project. They um, come to data.world, which is a third party data hosting site. Um, and we have a private group, so only our members can see this. But basically, we provide all of this documentation around, OK, here's what our national story is. Here's why we did this project. Here's how we did this project. Here's what we found. So we'll bullet point out our findings. Here's how you can localize it. And one of the great things about data.world is that these links automatically go to SQL queries that are in the browser where they can, our members can filter their data and just pull the data for their county or for their state. Um, we're also messing around a little bit with automated text generation and like actually writing paragraphs that they can drop in their story on, on certain topics. Um, this one we had an app within an app because, uh, if it loads, um, oh no, please sign, ah oh, man, it's not gonna show you. Um, so we had this app within an app where we uh, basically had FOIA'd, one of, one of the things about this project, the federal government in the US doesn't release d the data on uh, the status of dams in the US. Uh, so we had to go to every, all 50 states and request that information, pull it together, and then standardize it ourselves. Um, but then what we did was after our an analysis where we found here's the you know, number of dams that are in bad condition and could kill people if they failed, uh, we went back and FOIA'd 1,500 different documents on 1,500 different dams and then provided that to our members as well. So in this app within an app that unfortunately you can't see, um, like a reporter for Georgia could go in, click on Georgia, and then download all of the documents about dams in Georgia that were in trouble. So again, another way to help local reporting. And here we're guiding um, folks, um, local reporters, here's some questions you can ask uh, in your state about uh, the dams. We also created an interactive. Um, we provide people the iframe for the interactive, a whole bunch of methodology, uh, caveats. And then finally, um, here is the actual data that itself which again, our members can download as big CSVs or they can use the SQL in the browser to filter it and do all of their analysis right there in data.world. So again, we do about um, one of these every two weeks and actually the exciting news I have to share with you today is we are um, thinking about, well, we are going to uh, test out this project in Brazil next year. Um, and we are working with Daniel Trielli, who's over there. Um, and is a Brazilian journalist. And um, we're going to be testing out three specific data distributions in the next six months that um, hopefully will go to newsrooms across Brazil to help tell local stories in Brazil. So it's our first real attempt at doing this internationally. Um, it seemed like Brazil was a great place to do this because of the state, the state organization. First of all, there's the community of data journalists here, which is awesome. Um, and then the way geographically Brazil um, shakes out is just very similar to the US in the sense that there's lots of localization possibilities. So, um, so this is a project that we were looking to collaborate with um, Brazilian news organizations on. And we'd love to talk to you about more later today. <laughs>